Hi, divers. Alec Pierce again. Sea Hunt remembered. A chance for me to talk about my uh, collection, of which I'm very proud and uh, very excited as well. Largest collection of Sea Hunt memorabilia in the world. And uh, also a chance to maybe get you excited about Sea Hunt, about the fantastic uh, television program called Sea Hunt. Uh, and that got so many divers into the sport. Pretty well made the sport what it is today to a very large extent. And uh, also maybe get you interested in uh, starting your own collection. I always, I love to talk to collectors of Sea Hunt memorabilia. There's quite a few of them. Quite a few. A lot of them are my friends, and uh, we have a lot of fun sharing our ideas and thoughts. I put on displays all over the world. Bahamas, Mexico, Ohio, California, Florida, lots of times, local clubs and so on. I take some of my collection out, and I talk about Sea Hunt. I just love to do it. It's a lot of fun. Let me, I'm going to share with you another very small part of my collection again, but something of some interest, because people are always interested in the equipment that Mike Nelson wore. And uh, so I have a piece of uh, the equipment that he wore, and specifically, this time I have the knives that uh, Mike Nelson wore in the Sea Hound episodes. Now, in those days, there weren't a lot of dive stores, there weren't a lot of dive companies, there weren't a lot of dive knives. And so it was very, very common. I myself, in fact, used a, uh, a war surplus knife. Very, very common for divers to go to their local war surplus store and get a good quality military-type knife for them to use while scuba diving. And that's what Mike Nelson did. Absolutely. So one of the most common knives that we see uh, Mike Nelson using, actually using, we see it in the episodes, uh, using it underwater. We see it as well in the pictures. So here's a couple of pictures of Mike Nelson. And if you were able to look closely, you won't be able to right now. But, you know, when we study these pictures to find out exactly what he wore, we can see what mask he wore and so on. We can actually see the knife. We can see the handle of the knife. We can see the sheath. We can see how it's held on. And so with a little bit of work, we can actually figure out, this is a better picture that shows the, the K-Bar military knife that he wears with the leather handle and and the, the proper top and the sheath and everything else. And this is that knife. This is the knife that, that uh, Mike Nelson wore for many, many of his episodes, okay? And this is war surplus. This was a very, very common knife. Uh, it was used throughout the Vietnam War, as an example, from 55 to 75. And, uh, of course, see how it was filmed right smack in the middle of that time frame from 58 to 62. And uh, these were very, very common, easy to find. This is an early model. So they were probably slowly being replaced by the time towards the end of the Vietnam War. And, but they were, these were used in the Second World War as well and other, other uh, military actions. Very, very calm and knife. They had a metal sheath with a, some had metal sheath, metal boss on it. And uh, the knife, special military type features, bloodletting. This is a solid blade version. There was a serrated blade version as well and, and so on. The leather handle. And uh, this was very, very common. This is commonly called the K-Bar. This is a Mark I, I think, U.S. Navy Mark II uh, K-Bar knife made right in the United States. A very, very common U.S. surplus. You probably pay about 10 bucks for this knife. Today, they're probably uh, $150 to get one in good shape like this one with the sheath and the snap button. And they were really well made, good for divers, obviously waterproof, very rugged. Uh, the Marines can wear them, scuba divers can wear them, right? <laughs> and a nice big wide uh, buckle uh, or slot for your buckle, uh, snap on top to keep it safe. The sheath was very, very tight. It kept the knife in there really well. And uh, so it wouldn't fall out even if the buckle wasn't on there. So this is a very, very common knife for scuba divers. And it happens to be one of the knives that Mike Nelson himself wore in the Sea Hunt episode throughout many of them. Now, he did wear another knife. We also know from pictures, uh, not only the episodes, but also from some pictures that he wore another knife. We take a look at some of the pictures of uh, Mike Nelson, and we can look at it. We can say, that's not, uh, that's not a K-Bar. It's got some kind of a metal sheath on it. Uh, it's a knuckle-type knife, what was called, sometimes called a knuckle knife. And there's another picture of it hanging off his weight belt. And you can see, my gosh, that's not the, that's not the K-Bar. It's not that long. It seems to have a, some kind of a metal sheath. Well, in fact, that's exactly what it was. It was a, a specialized knife uh, that had a metal protective uh, uh, sh shield on it. This knife is a little different. Shorter, quite a bit shorter, as you can see, than, than the, uh, the K-Bar, a lot shorter. It has a plastic, completely plastic sheath, uh, similar metal holder for the top of the sheet for the knife to go into. The strap was very much the same, almost exactly the same. I wouldn't be surprised to discover that this was, in fact, a military design because it's in many ways so similar to the K-Bar knife. Uh, so same type of strap and same type of buckle. But the knife itself is quite a bit different. 
and now you can see the difference. First of all, the, the most immediate difference that you can see is it does have this protector on there. Now people look at this and they say, oh, that's to protect your knuckles. Other people say, well, that's in case of hand-to-hand -hand combat, and so on. I, it, it serves all those purposes. There was a pretty good reason to have some type of protection on your hand. Uh, sometimes it was good just for inserting the sheath, and the knife into the sheath, and withdrawing it. It gave your hand protection, made it easier to withdraw. Uh, it might be a little tough with gloves on, but it's pretty roomy. But this is a very special knife. Now, this one does have serrations on the outside edge, serrations on any knife. If you watch any of my tech tips, you know that serrations are good on any knife for cutting rope. Okay, it's tough sometimes to cut a rope, particularly a thicker rope with a sharp edge. Tough to do. But if you have serrations and you can saw through rope, and it saws through uh, uh, hemp or size of rope pretty easily. Sharp point as well, a nice sharp edge on it, and uh, with the uh, knuckle protection on it. This particular one is called the Vulcan, commonly called the Vulcan. Now, this was made. Uh, by different companies, um, some offshore companies as well. And Japan made some of these knives as well. And some had the name on it, some didn't. Some had made in Japan, some had nothing on it at all. This is happened to be what, what is called the original or proper Vulcan knife made by uh, U.S. Divers Corporation. And uh, quite common. These are not difficult to find, really. Now, to find one in really good shape, the knife, and to find a sheath, in good shape. Now that's where it gets more difficult. These sheaths were made of plastic and they weren't really well treated. Uh, scuba divers have a bad habit of dropping things and banging things so these uh, these knives weren't well treated and this plastic sheath was not nearly as tough as the K-bar and these commonly split. In fact I, I find it, I, I do not see many of these knives uh, at, at Sea Hunt uh, events. Yes, we run Sea Hunt events. We all go up and pretend we're Mike Nelson. <laughs> and uh, I don't see many of these out there that aren't split. I see some that are repaired. I see some that were split, been glued back together, wrapped in tape. So to find one like this, which essentially is brand new, no splits in the sheath at all, nice and shiny, no rust and a good knife, that makes it a little more difficult. But the knife itself, this design with the sheath and the, and the strap is not hard to find if you're a Sea Hunt collector. So if you are a Sea Hunt collector, now you know what to look for in terms of knives. There are two knives that Mike Nelson, that we know for sure that Mike Nelson used on a regular basis. And we don't, best of our knowledge, and I'm talking about the, the group of, of uh, sea hunt collectors who are pretty much the experts uh, at this particular uh, aspect. Uh, we don't know of any other knife that he used, not that we can find anyway. So if you're looking for the knives that Mike Nelson used in sea hunt, you're looking at them. There they are right there. Any questions or comments, be sure to send them in. I love uh, talking to uh, anybody who's interested in sea hunt and anybody interested in the collecting. And if you have stuff uh, in your collection, please call me. Uh, there's not too many things I don't have, but I'm always surprised once in a while when someone calls me up and tells me they have something. Oh my gosh, what would you like for that? We do some trading back and forth, and it can be a lot of fun. Okay, so Mike Nelson's Knives. Hope you enjoyed that. This is Alec Pierce, Sea Hunt Remembered. Talk to you real soon.